97% of the galaxies in the observable universe are moving away from us faster than the speed of light. But how can this be true when one of the unbreakable laws of the universe is that nothing can travel faster than light? The answer is that Einstein's theory of special relativity, the rules that dictate this, only applies to things travelling through space. But these distant galaxies aren't getting further away from us because they're moving through space, but because the space between us is expanding. So the distance between us and them is increasing faster than light could travel across that space. To get your head around this bizarre situation, here's a couple of popular analogies. Imagine I'm having a birthday party for anteaters, and I'm blowing up a balloon covered in ants. As the balloon inflates, the ants get further away from each other, even if they're standing still. The ants are like the galaxies, and the balloon the expanding space. But this picture isn't very satisfying, because space is three-dimensional, not two-dimensional like the surface of a balloon. So I can do a little better. Imagine I'm baking some bread with ants in it for this weird anteater party. The ants are scattered through the dough, and as the dough proves, it expands, making the ants get further away from each other again, but this time in 3D space. Note that the ants don't get any bigger, they stay the same size. This is just like the galaxies whose gravity is much stronger than the force that's causing space to expand, which we call dark energy. So galaxies, solar systems, stars and planets all stay the same size despite the expanding space they live in. The other caveat to this analogy is that space isn't expanding into anything else like the oven. Space is everything, and it's all expanding. A key result of this is that galaxies that are further away from each other will move away from each other faster. This is a natural result of the expanding space-time. To explain this better, let's look at a simple one-dimensional example. We're the galaxy in the middle, and we look at two galaxies that are exactly one megaparsec away in each direction. A megaparsec is about 3.26 million light-years. According to the measurements of astrophysicists, space is expanding by roughly 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So these other galaxies are moving away from us at 70 kilometers per second just from the expansion of space. Now let's see what this looks like from the leftmost galaxy. They would see our original galaxy moving away at 70 kilometers per second. But the second galaxy would be moving away twice as fast. And another galaxy that's a further 3 megaparsecs away would be retreating three times as fast. And you can see that the further and further away you go, the faster and faster this speed gets until you reach a point where the distant galaxies are moving away from us faster than light. This leads to some pretty mind-bending facts. When we see a distant galaxy, because the light has been travelling through space for a long time, we see the galaxy as it was in the distant past. But that same light tells us how far away the galaxy is right now, not how far away it was when the light was emitted. For example, let's look at the most distant galaxy we've ever observed, GNZ11. It's currently 32 billion light years away, but we see it as it was just 400 million years after the Big Bang, some 13.5 billion years ago. If we keep looking beyond GNZ11, we keep looking further back in time until we hit the limits of the cosmic horizon, the cosmic microwave background and the Big Bang. Although the universe is 13.8 billion years old, the cosmic horizon is further away at 45 billion light years. And this difference is because of the cosmic expansion. So today we observe galaxies where they are now, but as they were millions or billions of years ago. To make this concrete, let's tell the story of us and this galaxy. At the Big Bang, the atoms that will end up making us and GNZ11 were right next to each other because everything in the observable universe was packed into a tiny volume. Over the next 400 million years, space expanded. The first generation of stars formed and exploded, then gravity pulled their remnants into the second generation of stars. This is where our atoms were 400 million years after the Big Bang, when the young galaxy GNZ11, sitting just 2.6 billion light years away, emitted some light in our direction. This light travelled through space towards us for the next 13.5 billion years. The second generation of stars exploded and their remnants went on to form our galaxy and our sun, which is a third generation star. All this time, the light from GNZ11 was being stretched as the space it moved through was expanding. This caused its wavelength to get longer and longer, which is called a redshift. And today, the light finally reaches the lenses of the telescopes of us semi-intelligent tapes, and from the redshift of the light we can tell that right now, GNZ11 is 32 billion light years away. I say right now, but GNZ11 doesn't exist anymore. Its stuff will have turned into some other stars or galaxies a long time ago. But whatever it is now, because it's so far away, it's moving away from us faster than the speed of light. So no light it emits right now will ever reach us. 
So here's a question. How much of the universe is moving away from us faster than the speed of light? It turns out 97% of the stars and galaxies are. So there's like an invisible sphere of inaccessibility at about 13 billion light years, where even if you had a magical spacecraft that could somehow travel at the speed of light, we'd never be able to travel beyond it. Okay, so now we get to the physics puzzle I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Can you work out how to calculate how many of the galaxies in the observable universe are moving away from us faster than the speed of light? All of the information you need to solve this problem is contained within this video, so give it a go. I thought it'd be a fun thing to try. I got 97%, and I'll be posting my solution in exactly two days, but if you want to discuss your own solutions, we can use the comment section below. Okay. Now on to the last bit of this video, which is really kind of mind-bending. So we have two boundaries in our universe. One is the edge of the observable universe, and the other is this sphere of inaccessibility, where no signal we send today will ever be able to reach beyond it. The question is, how will these boundaries move in the future? For each one, will it get bigger or smaller or stay the same size? Pause the video now if you want to take a guess yourself. Unsurprisingly, because of the accelerating expansion of space, the sphere of inaccessibility is shrinking. So as time goes on, less and less of the universe would ever see any signal we emit today. In fact, every year, about 20 million stars slip forever beyond our reach. As for the edge of the observable universe, the opposite is happening. It's increasing in size over time, which blew my mind when I learned it, because it seems opposite to my intuition about the expanding universe. As time passes, more and more galaxies will slip into view at the edge of the observable universe. And right now, we can see more of the universe that we've ever been able to see in the history of the Earth. The reason for this is that the light from the galaxies that are currently outside the observable universe is already well on its way to reach us. And over time, more and more of that light has time to reach us. So in the future, we've got more time to see more of the universe. But remember, we will only ever see these galaxies as they were very soon after the Big Bang. We'll never see them as they are today. So it's kind of bittersweet to think that in the far future we'll be able to see more and more of the universe, but we'll be in touch with less and less. The sponsor of this video is Brilliant, and in these times, if you're looking for more puzzles to solve, it's a veritable treasure trove of activities to keep your mind busy. They have courses on many of my favourite subjects within physics, mathematics and computer science, like calculus, quantum computing and, of course, special relativity. In the courses, you do a combination of learning and problem solving, and there are many interactive tools that you can investigate to help you build up an intuition for the subjects. So if you're looking for something to keep yourself or your family members busy and learn some real science and mathematics, you should definitely check it out. And if you like what you see, the first 200 people to sign up from this channel for the paid subscription will get a 20% discount off their membership. Just go to brilliant.org DOS or click on the link in the description below. And thanks to Brilliant for their continued support of my videos.